Chapter 19 Earnings and Discrimination Our goal in this chapter is to answer the following questions. How do wages compensate for differences in job characteristics? Why do people with more education earn higher wages? Why are wages sometimes above their equilibrium values? Why is it difficult to measure discrimination? When might the market solve the problems of discrimination and when might it not? The, ta the, ta the following table shows uh, U.S. medium weekly earnings selected occupations in 2015. By way of introduction, in competitive markets, the wages workers earn equal the value of their marginal products. There are many factors that affect productivity and wages. Compensating differentials. Compensating differentials, the difference in wages that arise to offset the non-monetary characteristics of different jobs like unpleasantness, difficulty, safety. For example, coal miners and firefighters are paid more than other workers with similar education to compensate them for the extra risks. Night shift workers are paid more than day shift to comp compensate for the lifestyle disruption of working at night. Ability, effort and chance. Greater ability or effort often command higher pay. These traits increase workers' marginal product, make them more valuable to the farm. Wages are also affected by chance. For example, new discoveries no one could have predicted make some occupations obsolete, increase demand in others. Ability, effort, and chance are difficult to measure, so it is hard to quantify their effect on wages. They are probably important, though, since easily measurable characteristics like education, age, and etc. account for less than half of the variation in wages in our economy. Case study, the benefits of beauty. Research by Hammamesh and Biddle found that people deemed more attractive than average and 5% more than people of average looks. Average looking people earn 5-10% to 10 more than below average looking people. What explains these differences in wages? Good looks is a type of innate ability. It determines productivity and wages. Attractive worker is more valuable to the farm. Like uh, uh, jobs like acting and, and sales and waiting on tables. Farms' willingness to pay more to attractive workers reflect its customers' preferences. Reported beauty is in an indirect measure of other abilities like dress, hairstyle, personal demeanor, attributes that a person can control, perhaps more likely to be an intelligent person who succeeds at other tasks as well. We call it beauty premium and that's a type of discrimination. Ask the experts, inequality and skills. One of the leading reasons for rising U.S. income inequality over the past three decades is that technological change has affected workers with some skills 
uh, with some skill set differently than others. 88% agree, 4% disagree, 8% uncertain. The superstar phenomenon. Superstars in their fields, the great public appeal and astronomical incomes. Superstars arise in markets where every customer in the market wants the good supplied by the best producer. The good is produced with a technology that allows the best producer to supply every customer at low cost. Weekly earnings of full-time employed persons age 25 and above by education 2016. Less than high school, they were making $494 weekly. People with high school diploma, $679 weekly. Some college or associate degree, $782 weekly. Bachelor's degree, $1,155 weekly. Advanced degree, $1,435 weekly. Human capital. Human capital is accumulation of investments in people such as education and on-the-job training. It affects productivity and labor demand and wages. Farms demand, farms demanders of labor are willing to pay more for highly educated workers with higher marginal product. Workers Suppliers of labor are willing to pay the cost of becoming educated only if there is a reward for doing so, which is higher wages. Increasing value of the increasing value of skills. The earnings gap between college educated and non-college educated workers has widened in recent decades. Here we look at percentage difference in annual earnings for college graduates versus high school graduates. In 1972, there was 42% difference. In 2014, 81% difference uh, for men. And for women, 1974, 35% was the difference. In 2014, 71% is the difference. Case study, the increasing value of skills. An increase in international trade uh, increases domestic demand for skilled labor and uh, domestic demand for unskilled labor decreases or falls. Skill-based technological change, changes in technology raise the demand for skilled workers who can use the new machines, reduce demand for the unskilled workers whose jobs are replaced by computers. Discussion question. Suppose you are offered this choice. A. Spend four years studying at the world's best university, but, but must keep your attendance there a secret. Or number B, get an official degree from the world's best university but cannot actually study there. Which do you think would enhance your future earnings? Think. The signaling theory of education. Farms use education level to sort between high ability and low ability workers. The difficulty of earning a college degree demonstrates to prospective employers that college graduates are highly capable, yet the education itself has no impact on productivity or skills. The policy implication, increasing general education attainment would not affect wages. Above equilibrium wages, number one, minimum wage laws. 
the minimum wage may exceed the equilibrium wage of the least skilled and experienced workers. Number two, market power of labor unions. Union, work, union workers association that uh, bargains with employers over wages and working conditions. Higher wages, most union workers earn 10 to 20 percent uh, more than similar non-union workers. The theory of efficiency wages. Efficiency wages above equilibrium wages paid by farms to increase worker productivity. Farms may pay higher wages to reduce turnover, increase worker efforts, and attract high quality job applicants. Efforts of above equilibrium wages, effects of above equilibrium wages, surplus of labor or unemployment. Explaining wage differentials. Learning, active learning too. In each case, identify which worker would earn more and use the concept of this chapter in this chapter to explain why number A, the world's best physical therapist or the world's best writer. Number B, the trucker who hauls produce or the trucker who hauls hazardous waste. Number C, a graduate of an Ivy League college or an equally intelligent and capable graduate of a state university. Number D, someone who graduated from a state university with a 3.7 GPA or someone who graduated from the same university with a 2.4 GPA. Answers number A, the best physical therapist on the planet or the best writer on the planet. There's a superstar phenomenon here. The best writer can service many more customers than the best physical therapist. So the writer would be paid more. Number B, the trucker who hauls produce or a trucker who hauls hazardous waste from a nuclear power plant. This is a case of compensating differentials. The hazardous waste hauler earns more to compensate for the higher risks. Number C, a graduate of an Ivy League college or equally intelligent and capable graduate of a state university. This is signaling theory of education. Employers assume the Ivy League grad has more ability than the state university grad. Number D, someone who graduated from a state university with 3.7 GPA or someone who graduated from the same university with 2.4 GPA. This is a human capital theory of education. A higher GPA reflects greater learning, which leads to higher productivity and wages. Economics of discrimination. Discrimination is defined as offering of different opportunities to similar individuals who differ only by race, ethnic group, sex, age, or other personal characteristics. Measuring labor market discrimination. Median earnings for full-time white males 22, they earn 22% more than white females and they earn 28% more than black males. Taken at face value, these differences look like evidence of employers uh, that employers discriminate. But there are many possible explanations for wage differences besides discrimination. Different groups of workers earn substantially different wages. Discrimination? Well, human capital, which is the quality and quantity of education, job experience, that will create discrimination, kinds of work able and willing to do, compensating differentials, working conditions, 
differences in educational attainment. In 2014, men age 25 and older, 32% of white population had college degree, 20% of black population had college degree. In 2014, women age 25 and older, 32% of white population had a college degree, and 24% of black population had a college degree. Quality of public schools. As measured by expenditure, class size, and so on, historically, public schools in predominantly black areas have been of lower quality than public schools in predominantly white areas. There may well be discrimination in access to education, but this problem occurs long before workers enter the labor force. Human capital acquired in the form of job experience. Women are more likely to interrupt their careers to raise children. Women have less on the job experience than men. Population age 25 to 44, 75 percent of women are in the labor force 90 percent of men are in the labor force compensating differentials men and women do not always choose the same type of work women are more likely to be secretaries men are more likely to be truck drivers different working conditions here case study. Is Emily more employable than Lakeisha? Economists Marianne Bertrand and uh, Sandil Mulianathan answered more than 1,300 help wanted ad um, run in Boston and Chicago newspapers. They sent in nearly 5,000 fake resumes uh, that are similar. Half of the resumes had uh, resumes had names that were common to the African American community, and the other half had names that were common among white population. The results: job applicants with white names received fifty percent more calls. Discrimination occurred for all types of employers. What's the conclusion? Racial discrimination is still a prominent feature of the labor market. Discrimination by employers. If one group in society receives a lower wage than another group, even after controlling for human capital and job characteristics, who is to blame for this differential? Employers' discriminatory wage differences. Competitive market econ economies. Natural antidote to employer discrimination is the profit motive. So let's look at these two graphs where uh, uh, female workers and the other market for male workers. Suppose some farms discriminate against female workers, they will hire fewer females and more males. The demand for females will decline, demand shifting to the left for female, demand shifting to the right for male. The result is wage differential. Why? As demand for female workers decline, wages decline for women. As demand for male workers increase, wages increase for males. Non-discriminating farms, the result of this is that non-discriminating farms can hire females for a lower wage rate. Since female workers are now paid less, non-discriminating can come in and take advantage, giving them a cost advantage and economic profits, which attract entry of other non-discriminating farms. This, uh, the discriminating farm, will begin to lose money and be driven out of the market. What is the result? 
Demand for female workers will increase as non-discriminating employers hire females and demand for male workers will fall until wages are again equalized. There you go. Men and women paid equal. What about discrimination by consumers? Discrimination by consumers may result in discriminatory wage differentials. Suppose firms care only about maximizing profits, but customers prefer being served by whites. Then firms have an incentive to hire white workers, even if non-whites are willing to work for lower wages. What about discrimination by government? Some government policies mandate discriminatory practices like apartheid, apartheid in South Africa before 1994, early 20th century US laws requiring segregation in buses and streetcars. Such policies prevent the market from correcting discriminatory wage differentials. Conclusion, in competitive markets, Workers are paid a wage that equals the value of their marginal product. Many factors affect the value of marginal products and equilibrium wages. The profit motive can correct discriminatory discrimination by employers, but not discrimination by consumers or discriminatory practices of government. In summary, Workers earn different wages for many reasons. Wage differentials play a role compensating workers for job attributes. Workers in hard and pleasant jobs are paid more than workers in easy, pleasant jobs. Workers with more human capital are paid more than workers with less human capital. Years of education, experience, and job characteristics. The unexplained variation in earnings is likely attributable to natural ability, efforts, and chance. The signaling theory. More educated workers earn higher wages, not because education raises productivity, but because workers with high natural ability use education as a way to signal their high ability to employers. So increasing the educational attainment of all workers would not raise the overall level of wages. Three explanations of above equilibrium wages are minimum wage laws, unions, and efficiency wages. Some differences in earnings are attributable to discrimination based on race, sex, or other factors. Competitive markets tend to limit the impact of discrimination on wages. Non-discriminatory firms will be more profitable than discriminatory firms. Discrimination persists in competitive markets if customers are willing to pay more to, discri to discriminatory firms or if the government passes laws requiring firms to discriminate.